Can I ask you what Star Wars Detours is? I think yeah, no, it's a. Um, you know the guys who do Robot Chicken? Yeah. They're doing a uh, completely thematic cartoon show. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be fantastic. Okay. All right. Seth and Matt. And they're okay. Gonna, yeah. And I'm, what what little I've seen, it was fantastic. Yeah. Funny and great. So it's Star Wars characters set in a sitcom set. Yeah. With their typical, you know, humor and. Is, is it the pre? Uh, is it um, an anthology? The way? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, so okay. it should be good. Okay. So the Phantom Menace is coming out in 3D next yes. month. Yes. Uh, and I think I heard you quoted as to say that perhaps that would be the only one. No, 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 no. I think the idea is, is that they're, they're, we're all planning to do all six, but we don't know whether 3D will be a viable market in two years, three years. I mean, we've already started on episode two and the groundwork for three. But I, as I said, to me, it's an evolutionary thing. We just don't know where the business is actually okay. going to go. The plan is to go one a year, though. Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. Until right. it stops working or it either continues to build. The real issue is, is. Um, you know, for us, the lab, because we're doing, we're, it's being released 2D and 3D, is that it's, again, another generation, believe it or not. It's kind of quarter generation of people yeah. that haven't seen it in the theater. Sure. Um, but also, it helped at the particular time that George made that commitment to further increase, just as Jim Cameron had, uh, had promised Titanic and 3D, which is a beautiful job, as George saw about a couple of minutes out, um, and Peter with uh, Lord of the Rings, is, is it helped push the momentum of digital cinema because without it, there's no way we're going to get the, okay. the theater owners to actually commit to. You know, we're not talking about we're talking about seventy five to hundred thousand dollars commitment for a theater. For a theater, and, you know, maybe one hundred and fifty if they add it to their soundtrack. That's nothing. Yeah, yeah. And they fight it to the beat. Right. Personally, three D is an evolutionary step. It's just a thing. But for us, George Lai and, and Jim Cameron and Peter Jackson and a whole bunch of major filmmakers, it was absolutely crucial because the theater owners are so greedy. They could see that they could do a surcharge, and that gave them the strength to be able to, to go from basically optical to a digital presentation. Because at least now, if nothing else, um, you know, uh, I'll give you an example. In 2005, when we did we did 22,000 prints worldwide of Revenge of the Sith. For Revenge of the Sith, we had THX, 600 people checking those prints. We had all the resources. I wouldn't say power is the wrong word, but we had all the influence in the business, all the support. And we only got 200 what we would call double A prints wow. out of 22,000. Really? But 22,000 was $40 million worth of prints. Because you got to get those prints, you got to transport them, and everything else. So to have 200 print, prints that. And then those 200 prints go to good theaters, but then that doesn't mean the sound is any good. And right. We spent $5 million on the soundtrack. Right. You know, we, we spent 14, 15 weeks in a minute, and there's only four or five theaters that you can actually hear it the way in which we made it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the big tragedy of the thing. You have a group of people who are really real estate mavens who do have no respect whatsoever for their audience. And they make their money from concessions, they make their money from the studio, but they don't, you know, they average, and my car has a better sound system than the average theater. Yeah, it's true. And and a lot of people. Car, but, but if you care about your audience, if you've shot on film, you have to transfer it to digital. Mm -hmm. No one ever understood that that was our argument. We were never trying to tell anybody what they had to do in terms of acquisition of the image. We were just trying to say, look, if you care about your, because what happens is if you're a cameraman, you're a director, you live in Los Angeles, you take your crew to the Academy thing, which is fantastic, you're showing a print of the original negative, it's not a real print, or a film, and you don't see the film anywhere else. Well, of course it looks beautiful, but for the rest of the world, yeah. or the Akron, it's, Ohio, it's, yeah, yeah, or anywhere else, you go anywhere outside of Los Angeles, you go to Riverside, California, you know, or you go to Brooklyn, you go to Long Island, and you just can't, it's put on a platter, it travels 30 or 40 feet across a room on wires, right. you know, it's just the soundtrack is destroyed within three or four days. Right. Yeah. Uh, the theater, half the surrounds don't work. There's nobody knows how to use them or place them properly. Yeah, yeah. And that's bullshit. Whereas right now, you can go off and buy a $699 THX-approved sound system in your home. Yeah. You know, and it finds itself where it should be. Yeah, yeah. And it does a little matrix for you, and you've got perfect sound. Order it on Amazon. Yeah, no, delivered to you. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs>